Hi guys, Rene here and welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to talk about an often discussed uh, cycling product and that is a power meter. Now when I got into cycling I made sure that I have one early on and I started um, training with it very soon, which many people don't do. And I think uh, on the whole it is the most important aspect of any of my bikes because without it really uh, it just doesn't make sense unless it's an XCO bike or a cyclocross bike but I don't really like neither of those disciplines so uh, not that important anyway um, when I started and when I got into the bike business I thought that it's very useful which it is and that everybody uh, should have one and just a couple of weeks ago I started realizing that uh, it isn't like so at all because basically when you get on a bicycle all the outcomes are and and all the interactions between the different components they're all just a part of a big physics equation and if you don't have a basic understanding of how your power falls into that your your speed your heart rate etc and how they are connected uh, then it doesn't really make sense to have one at all because i follow some riders on strava sometimes i check uh, the data just out of curiosity and i found some really really weird things and then yeah, I just started realizing that people just don't don't understand what they're doing when they have a power meter on the bike. Just to name uh, some examples of these weird uh, things that I saw. Firstly, um, people confuse uh, riding your bike and riding their bike and training on their bike. It's uh, it's really not the same. And some people, even if they have a power meter, they just riding along like always and they ride kind of hard and not really all that hard at all never and then they're surprised that for years uh, they keep on the same level and then they start getting older and all, all they do is just uh, keep getting worse so that's that's a clear sign of well that riding your bike is is not training for cycling and I have a beautiful example uh, very close to where I live uh, there's a guy that rides uh, 200 kilometers every single day but literally every single day and he's slow I could probably beat him by pedaling with my hands and I don't do anywhere near that amount of riding so but I do a lot more training and that's that's the key thing uh, then of course this is the most obvious uh, downside the second thing is uh, that even if some people have a power meter they don't realize that they have to ride to the power it shows them because they just some people just keep riding with the power meter without without reacting to it uh, one of the golden quotes i heard is that when a rider said when i tried to explain him time trial pacing and riding a threshold and that uh, for example when i hold 300 watts i try to hold it steady no matter the the wind or or the incline to a certain degree of course uh, not all courses are flat paced but anyway then he turned to me with the golden code that his power automatically increases when he goes to a headwind so that's that's a clear sign of of not understanding this at all so what i encourage you to do is if you decide to buy a power meter then 
in order so it's not just an expensive gadget on your bike you really owe yourself um, to because it's not it's they're not difficult things uh, it's not quantum mechanics to a certain degree you really owe it to yourself to look into it look into the basic physics of bike riding then look into the basic basic principles of training and power zones etc uh, so so you understand and you can actually reap the benefits of having one because otherwise you just can't otherwise you just have one more metric on your bike computer that's completely irrelevant and uh, yeah with that effort you can have a tamagotchi on there it wouldn't make a difference then the next thing that i see that people fail to realize is power numbers are useless unless they are related to something because a rider once asked me i did i don't know 180 watts 210 normalized average uh, and is that good well I just said it depends if you are a light 50 kilo girl and you average that for the length of dirty Kanza you're a world-class athlete if uh, you're a 120 kilo rider and you average that for a 10 minute maximum effort you're just not very good um, so it's all very very relative the other thing that comes uh, straight after this is understanding the principle of the mean max power or or said simply your power curve so you have to understand because some people say i can do 500 watts okay but for how long again if you can do 500 watts as your maximum sprint you're not a very good sprinter if you can do 500 watts for five minutes when you are 60 kilos you're a world-class athlete so again power is relative extremely closely related to duration and body weight and everybody needs to realize uh, what what power can they hold for for how long of course the, there's the basics uh, like FTP and um, setting your zones according to that in my opinion that's uh, unless you're a time trialist that's not the be all and end all of cycling by any means and again if you want to take this uh, seriously and to use the benefits then you need to learn your power curve and how it works and um, what it does then of course there's the topic of the actual power zones and training relative to them the first thing you need to realize is that in order to, to set up any kind of training you need to have a goal in mind a realistic one of course but you need the goal because you just can't you can't just go out to nowhere because planning is about achieving something and if you don't have a goal then then you can't plan and you, and you can't improve uh, one of my clients said to me when he got a power meter uh, that to to make him some training or set him up with some training because he wants to improve a little bit and i said yeah but improve what by a little bit improve your sprint power improve your maximum endurance improve your your time trolling whatever so it really isn't again it's just related to the duration related to the goal related to the timeline the events you do etc okay so if you're still with me you're probably wondering what are those other metrics that you should know about i've already talked about ftp and power curve those are pretty straightforward a power curve is a plot where you display 
uh, how much power can you sustain for how long an FTP is just a slot at the one hour mark uh, roughly based on which you set your training zones usually so this is pretty crucial uh, then the other thing you should know about is how average power and normalized power are related to each other so basically average power is just a numerical average normalized power is a weighted average that stresses or shows the added stress on the body uh, because of accelerations and working over threshold so it's more realistic uh, when you're judging different kinds of efforts then it's training stress score also a very important one it just shows very objectively how much uh, effort you've done and how hard your actual training session or race was uh, then there are other ones uh, that are kind of just variations of these so you have intensity factor IF is just a percentage of how much your normalized power was relative to your FTP uh, then there's VI which is the variability index uh, this just compares how variable your efforts were during your ride so it compares your average power to your normalized power um, and it's pretty straightforward for a flat time trial you would get a, uh, something very close to one being uh, normalized power and average power are equal and for a criterium or a cyclocross race you they will differ widely so you can have um, vi's as high as 1.5 1.6 maybe even more okay now these are the traps uh, in terms of theory that people fall into but there are two more in terms of uh, using and getting a power meter as well so the first one are uh, cheap unreliable power meters what's the problem with this uh, if you're just getting a power meter for the sake of having a power meter then you shouldn't get one at all because if you get a cheap one that's not accurate reliable repeatable in its measurements it's not going to help you improve if you do want to improve then you need one that combines those qualities so uh, a non-reliable option a non from a non-reputable brand uh, is a no-go you need something like cork a power to max um, seoma pedals uh, some of those have really good uh, price to performance ratios uh, nowadays they are really quite affordable and very well working so uh, if you want one only get a good one because only that will help you and then secondly even if you have a good power meter like this one it's completely useless if you don't do zero offsets often and by often I mean I'm doing this uh, with my quark before every single ride why is that a power meter is like a scale if you don't do tear if you don't do a zero it's not going to measure as correctly as it could uh, again that's that helps and improves your data which of course can be connected to the things that I've said before about cheap power meters um, some people uh, like to use the auto calibration or so called auto zero uh, things in their power meters uh, for me I wouldn't because it can do weird things uh, of course these functions are getting better but best in my opinion is a manual zero offset okay so I think that sums up the basics again I'll say say it in my opinion if you decide to invest uh, your hard-earned money on a power meter you owe it to yourself to understand what it does and what the outputs mean because basically that's uh, the only chance that it will actually make an improvement to your riding and you'll be a better rider afterwards of course I wasn't born with this knowledge I didn't start off cycling uh, with this knowledge 
I made all the beginner mistakes that everyone does. Uh, the difference is that I always strive to be my best and, and to improve. And yeah, you really don't need huge mental capabilities to understand this stuff. And my latest advice, because I uh, never had a coach really so far until this season, but I realized that in order to really uh, push my performance to the next level, basically if you look at my Strava, I'm pretty much training like a professional athlete now under the guidance of a professional coach and it's really really paying the dividends so that is also an option if you just get a power meter and you don't want to worry about all this stuff or you really want to make sure that you're doing the right things uh, in order to improve as quickly and as efficiently as possible then yeah having a coach is for the greatest thing uh, and it's my greatest mistake that i didn't have one until now but you live and learn I hope uh, that you can do that too and you will improve. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.